Hi, I'm Griffin Johnson, the Armchair Historian. Today's episode, How America's Mission in Vietnam Failed. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. More on that later. Good morning, Vietnam, and everywhere else. The Vietnam conflict is one of the most controversial chapters in US history and helped define an entire generation. Its enduring notoriety can be traced to a number of factors. These included unprecedented media coverage and widespread distrust of the American government. To help understand this watershed moment, we're asking the question of how a global superpower suffered such a humiliating defeat. Before we talk about America's defeat in Vietnam, we'll have to talk about Vietnam under French rule, which started in the latter half of the 19th century. Since Europeans are just so great at listening to native people and respecting their pre-existing geographic borders, they decided to call this region, which includes modern-day Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam, Indochina. Presumably because it's sandwiched between India and China, it was all very subtle and creative. France quickly and decisively established themselves in this region, quelling any uprisings and forcing local rulers to cooperate with French colonial administrators. But this changed during the Second World War. In 1940, France was occupied by Germany, leaving their colonial territory largely undefended, and Japan was quick to seize this opportunity. Some initially saw the Japanese as Asian liberators, but were quickly disillusioned by the sheer brutality of the new regime, and nationalist sentiments began to sweep the nation, calling for self-governance. Once the Allies had secured victory in 1945, the French returned to Indochina, and everyone was just so happy to see them, especially the Vietnam Independence League, or Viet Minh. This group of armed insurgents was led by the once-exiled intellectual Ho Chi Minh, who was staunchly anti-colonialist. At this point, the United States was in a bind, as they once supported the Viet Minh against the Japanese during the Second World War. But French stability was seen as an important element in stopping communism from spreading into Southeast Asia. And Minh's anti-colonialist stance was something decidedly Bolshevik in influence. Despite French calls for support during the 1940s and 50s, the United States ultimately decided not to send troops to Vietnam. By 1954, France had completely pulled out of Indochina after seven long years of bloodshed, splitting the area between communist-aligned North Vietnam and an unpopular and generally corrupt Western-aligned South Vietnam. But peace wouldn't last long. In 1955, fighting continued, but this time between North and South. President Kennedy, like Eisenhower, was hesitant to put boots on the ground in Vietnam after the humiliating defeat of France. But after Kennedy's assassination in 1963, Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson, seeing communism threaten the status quo in Asia once more, ramped up U.S. involvement after the late summer of 1964, when it was claimed that two U.S. ships that were aiding the South Vietnamese military came under attack by communist forces in the Gulf of Tonkin. Congress soon gave President Johnson the authority to send U.S. troops, and by early 1965, thousands were deployed. Now that we know why exactly America found itself in Vietnam, let's find out how it all went wrong. The American soldiers in Vietnam were fighting two enemies, whose battle tactics were well honed through years of combat against the French and Japanese. The first were southern insurgents called the Viet Cong, and the second were the more organized North Vietnamese Army, or NVA. The NVA was well supplied by the Soviet Union and China, and fought with aggressive guerrilla tactics that the US was in most ways unprepared for. U.S. General William Westmoreland led the American army in Vietnam and waged a strictly attrition-based defensive war. Westmoreland was known to have let politics dictate his decision-making process, as policymakers in Washington instead wanted statistics and numbers to show that they were winning. Success was measured by body counts, but counterintuitively, the more bombs that were dropped and the more people that were killed, the more support the North Vietnamese gained. 
The US was attempting to wage a conventional war, as they did in Korea, but the non-uniformed Viet Cong were highly mobile and unidentifiable, avoiding direct confrontations whenever they could, relying on ambushes, booby traps, and similar tactics to grind at US morale. The result of this strategy was that there were no actual front lines. While the Viet Cong frustrated US troops in the south, the NVA commander, Vo Wayne Zop, also knew that a conventional war was impossible to win, and focused on winning over the people through an extensive propaganda network. He is quoted saying, Do not fear the enemy, for they can only take your life. Fear the media far more, for they will destroy your honor. The Americans, meanwhile, believed that their attrition strategy was successful, and Westmoreland was predicting an imminent end of the war. But unbeknownst to him, Vietnamese forces were effectively using the Ho Chi Minh Trail to move large amounts of supplies through neutral Laos, despite being bombed almost every hour. By 1968, the US illusion of imminent victory was shattered by the Tet Offensive. The brutal campaign saw over 80,000 NVA and Viet Cong troops attack more than 100 cities throughout the country, including the South Vietnamese capital of Saigon. Much of the fighting, such as in Hue, became the war's bloodiest battles. Despite launching such an ambitious attack, the NVA made few if any tangible gains, but it struck a devastating blow to American morale not only back in the United States, but also in the field. At home, the leaking of the Pentagon Papers also dispelled any justifications for the war and revealed atrocities such as the My Lai Massacre, further increasing an anti-war sentiment across the country. And a so-called credibility gap began to grow between what the public was told and what they believed. As William Westmoreland himself would later say, it's the first war we've ever fought on the television screen and the first war that our country ever fought where the media had full reign. The casualties suffered in the war were now seen in a new light, with so many men having been lost thus far on the other side of the world, and they weren't even winning, while the NVA could strike at any time. Faced with a crushingly negative public opinion, the American government was forced to withdraw the nation's forces in 1973, and two years later, the NVA finally captured Saigon, ending the conflict. Now a word from our sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is a realistic vehicle combat game that is free to download on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. You can battle alongside millions of other players with thousands of meticulously reproduced, historically accurate tanks, aircraft, and ships from World War II to even Vietnam. They've actually added attack helicopters recently, some of which were used during the Vietnam War. If you use my link in the description below, you can register and receive a free premium tank or aircraft and three days of premium account time. Start playing today and you can join the action in massive online battles on land, air, or at sea.